Family Theater presents Loretta Young, Mala Powers, and Gigi Perot. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Just for Tonight, starring Loretta Young and Gigi Perot. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Mala Powers. Thank you, Tony Lafrana. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now for our drama, Just for Tonight, starring Loretta Young as Chris and Gigi Perot as Linda. <laughs> When the Hillsboro Summer Stock Company closed early in September, most of the cast had the same idea. Get back to New York and the chance of a part in a fall Broadway show. And so it is that on a certain September afternoon, we find the company's young leading lady, Christine Marshall, with two of the other actors, Hal and Jane Bradley, on board the Midwest Flyer, due in Cincinnati at 1.45. Only it's 3.15 and all hope of connection with the night train to New York is gone. Jane, in particular, is worried. Chris, do you think I'd better wake Hal and tell him the bad news? Oh, no. Let him sleep in peace. <laughs> Look at him. Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> Even sprawled out all over the seat and with his mouth open, he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> As a bride of two days, naturally, you're not prejudiced. <laughs> Mrs. Hal Bradley. Mm, sounds good, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, Chris, early in the summer, I thought Hal was going to go for you. I still can't believe he picked me. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Chris, isn't there a Hal for you somewhere? Well, if there is, I haven't found him. Why not? I just haven't. Oh, maybe I'm spoiled. No man I meet ever comes up to my standard. What standard? My dad. How do you mean? Well, Janie, my mother died when I was nine, and practically from then on, I kept house for my dad. We were always very close, and, well, he was a pretty wonderful guy, that's all. Oh, honey, that's swell, but you can't let the memory of your dad mess up your whole life. Donna, Chris, you're younger than I am and prettier and ten times smarter. And yet, look, I got a guy like Hal. <laughs> of course, maybe I'm just lucky. <laughs> you can say that again, baby. Hal Bradley. <laughs> Have you been awake all this time? Oh, of course. Well, sit up. My arms are asleep. Of all the dirty tricks. Grace, you wanted information. Alternate connections out of Cincinnati. Uh, yes, Conductor. C can we make another train tonight for New York? Only one is a milk train at 3.40 in the morning, miss. No passengers. Oh, that means overnight here. Well, that's all right. We'll all go to a hotel tonight and take a train in the morning, huh? Mm, might not be so simple, miss. Veterans Convention in town this weekend. Chances are there's not a room to be had. Oh, don't you believe it. Somewhere in Cincinnati tonight are two vacant rooms. And between us, we'll find them. You couldn't okay. put a cot in the living room? Oh, there are three there already, huh? Well, okay, thanks. Well, that finishes my list. Yeah, mine too. Even the room for rent ads. Gosh, what are you gonna do, Chris? Now look here, kids. You two are all set. That cousin of yours has one spare room. Well, you go ahead and I'll look out for something else. Oh, hey, I've got it. Hand me that newspaper again. The help wanted column. Here, Chris. What's up? Well, I read of a girl doing this during the war. Somebody in this town must need a maid. Well, for one night, they're going to have one. A good one. And free. Oh, Chris, you can. Why can't I? And it could be fun. Now, let's see. Help wanted woman. Here. Here, listen to this. Attractive private room, a separate entrance, liberal salary to a qualified maid, housekeeper, small family, phone, locust, 7432. Perfect. Hal, give me a nickel, will you? Okay, oh, here. Chris, we'll work something out. Now, look. I'm supposed to be an actress. I've got an equity card to prove it. 
Why can't I play the part of a maid for one night? And in the morning, I leave before anyone's up. A polite thank you note on the dresser? Well, what's wrong with that, huh? Hey, maybe she's got something, Katie. <laughs> sure I have. Hello? Hello. Is this Locust 7432? Uh, yes. Uh, you're not calling about the ad. Yes. Yes, I was. Well, where are you? Uh, at the station. Well, come right out. Uh, Get a taxi and come right out. I'll pay for it. But I... The address is 418 Laurel Hope. We'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Well... <laughs> It would seem my problems are solved. I have to take a taxi right out there. Oh, Chris, don't do it, please. Why not? Well, it's, it's all too uh, complicated. Now, why is it complicated? If I don't like the setup, I don't have to stay there. Oh, oh now forget it, you two. Go on to your cousins and don't worry about me. And I'll be giving the performance of my lifetime. <laughs> You did come? Yes. Oh. You're the one who phoned? Yes, sir. About the ad? That's right. Oh, but you're so... Uh, I mean, you're so much younger than I'd anticipated. Uh, younger and... Uh, uh, younger. I'm sorry if it's a problem, sir. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. Please, come in. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm Tim Harris. Uh, how do you do, sir? My name is Christine... Uh, Christine Marshall. Uh, there's one question I may as well ask you to start with. Yes? I hope you don't object to children. Children? Yes, I have a little girl. She's ten, and it's because of her I need someone so badly. You see, Linda's mother died two years ago, and, well, I'm afraid she's not an easy youngster to handle. Uh, Mr. Harris, the I don't The fact is, no one will stay because of her. I've had seven different housekeepers in three months. You have? Yes. Well, uh, Mr. Harris, to be frank, I, I hadn't exactly counted Look, on a Christine, child. Christine, and... I'm in a spot, please. How about staying even a day or two till I can get someone? Even just overnight. Overnight? Yes, tomorrow I can make some other arrangement. But now, this afternoon, I simply have to get down to my office. I haven't been there in three days. And as for tonight, well, tonight's terribly important. In a way, it's the key to the whole problem. It is? What my daughter really needs is a mother. Well, tonight there's a party formally announcing my engagement. Oh. Well, naturally, I've got to be there. <laughs> I believe it's customary, sir. Then you will stay? Please. Just for tonight. All right, Mr. Harris. I, I guess I can stay. Just for tonight, though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and now, uh, you must meet Linda. Oh, yes. She's in her room. Uh, I am not. I'm here. <laughs> Linda, have you been listening? No. Uh, Linda, this is uh, Chris. Is that right? Yes, sir. Hello, Linda. Oh, your daddy didn't tell me how pretty you were. I'm not either. I've got freckles. Oh, so have I. Is that bad? You have not. You're a liar and I hate you. Go away from here. Linda, you mustn't talk like that. <laughs> I, I'm sure she doesn't mean it. I do, too. Linda! Uh, you, you go ahead to your office, Mr. Harris. I, I'm sure that Linda and I will get along just fine. In fact, we, uh, we may even turn out to be friends. <laughs> Chris, I'm just leaving for dinner. Oh? Is this tie straight? Oh, it's perfect. In fact, you, uh, you look very handsome, if I may say so. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, sir. Uh, incidentally, Chris, I, I want to thank you for all this. Oh? Linda's dinner time was the most peaceful it's been in weeks. And she ate everything. You're wonderful with her. Well, she's a lovely child. You know, this afternoon, after I told her she was too smart to hate somebody she didn't even know, she decided to help me with the dinner. <laughs> and she liked it, too. In fact, Mr. Harris, your daughter will be able to keep house for you herself before long. Uh, I mean that, uh... Hey, all of a sudden you look very strange when you said that. What's wrong? Did I? Well, maybe it's because I, I suddenly remembered something, huh? Chris, you seem very intelligent about all this. Why do you suppose it is that Linda automatically says she hates every housekeeper I hire? Well, sir, since you ask me, I, I can't think of one reason. What? Did she ever hear you say that once you got someone to help take care of her, that you and your fiancé could go ahead with your marriage? Yes, I suppose she has. Oh, but it's not logical. My marrying means a mother for the kid. It also means her sharing you with another person. Oh, but Sylvia loves Linda. When we're together, it's all she talks about. Oh. Yes, even before we were engaged, Sylvia could see that Linda needed a mother's care and attention. Well, your Miss Sylvia sounds very, very nice. Hmm? Oh, yes, yeah, she is. Well, I've got to go. Listen, don't worry about Linda. 
We'll get along fine. Oh, uh, she likes a story before she goes to sleep. Oh, I'll tell her one. And good night, sir. <laughs> There in the castle on the glass mountain, they lived happily ever after. There. Now it's sleep time. One more story, please. It's late, Linda. Oh, please. Why, Linda Harris, you said please twice. I can be polite when I want to. <laughs> you certainly can. Linda, tell me, uh, should somebody who, who, who doesn't have any business in something try to uh, help somebody else who needs help even if they really know they should uh, keep out of it, huh? Huh? You're all mixed up, aren't you? <laughs> well, maybe I am. Look, Linda, I, I will tell you one more story. It's about a princess. A princess and a king. Did the princess have a mother? No. No, the princess was a little girl just about your age. And the king was her father. And his wife, the queen, was dead. And the king was very lonely. And then he fell in love with someone else, a queen from another kingdom. And he was going to marry her. I bet the little princess didn't want him to, huh? That's right. She didn't. And so to please her, he didn't. And he reigned all alone all the rest of his life with, with just his daughter for company. Didn't he love the princess? Oh, yes. Yes, he loved her very much. But... Still, his life was lonely. And as she grew older, hers was too. You see, she felt she had to stay close to her father even when she should have been thinking of a prince in shining armor herself. And so, because she'd been selfish a long time ago, neither the princess nor her father were as, well, were as happy as they might have been. That's a sad story. I don't like that story. What was the princess's name? Maybe her name was... Christine? I don't like sad stories. They make me cry. Duh. They make lots of people cry. Chris, Chris, stay with me. Please stay with me till I'm asleep. Well, of course I will, darling. Please, Chris. Now, now, don't cry. I'll stay right here with you, Linda. Jane? Yes. It's Chris. Oh, hi, honey. Uh, you said you could stay at your cousin's a while? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell Hal to cancel those reservations for, for tomorrow and make them for Thursday instead. Thursday? But why? Well, I've got something to do, and, I, and, and I've got to do it by then. Well, do they still think you're really a housekeeper there? Yes. Yes, and they've got to go on thinking it. That way, maybe I can help. Help who? With what? Chris, honey, what's got into you? You sound upset. Now, what cooks? Never mind, Jane. Just remember, we're leaving on Thursday. Yes. And listen, if I try to change my mind again, don't let me, will you? All right. Be sure that we take that train on Thursday. Chris, I don't know quite what to say. Even in these few days, you've just about transformed this house. Why, Linda's a different child. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Harris. There isn't any way I can persuade you to stay? I'm afraid not. But why? Well, it can't be Linda, not with you. Oh, no, no, I'm very fond of Linda. Well, then? Uh, well, oh, but I should have realized it's probably a man somewhere, huh? <laughs> Maybe a man somewhere does have something to do with it, yes. Oh, nice guy, appreciate you? He's a little, uh, involved. Oh, one of those things, yes. huh? Yes. Well, then, then maybe it's a mistake to go where he is. You know, Chris, a wonderful, sweet, sympathetic girl like you can find anyone... Mr. Harris, I really do have to leave. Today at three, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, too. Well, I... I better get to work. I, I left a check on the desk. Yes, thank you. And I hope you and Miss Sylvia will be very happy. Oh, that's another thing. Yes, how did you work that in just three days? Linda seems to feel altogether differently about my marriage. Well, I couldn't do much in so short a time, but I... Well, I did try to build up in Linda's mind that stepmothers can be wonderful. Oh. And, and that your Sylvia would be. That's all. Christine Marshall, you're much too young to know more about my own daughter than I do. Well, maybe I knew a little girl like her not long ago. Chris, don't go. I have to. I'm sorry. And on the 340 train, you, you said you'd gotten somebody else. Yes, you? she'll be here before three. 
And Miss Sylvia? Uh, she'll be here when the woman arrives? Oh, yes. Well, I confess I'm... I'm anxious to meet your fiancé myself. Uh, yeah. Uh, incidentally, uh, do you suppose you could talk to her about... Uh, well, you know, you've gotten along so well with Linda. Oh, no, I'm afraid that's not practical. But perhaps I can mention a few things about Linda's clothes and food. Well, do that, will yes, you? Yes, surely I'd be delighted to. <sighs> Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye. And for Linda, and for me. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Your Highness. And I hope for all three of you it's happily ever after. Gosh, Chris, do you suppose Sylvia isn't coming? Oh, she'll be here. She's got to be. On account of you have to go, huh? That's right, dear. I wish you didn't. Couldn't we all four stay here? You and Sylvia and Daddy and me? Daddy and I, dear. <laughs> I'm afraid that wouldn't work out. Oh. oh, there she is. Hello, Sylvia. Linda, hello, darling. Oh, gosh, Sylvia. <clears throat> are we glad to see you? We are, are we? Well, what a nice big hug. Good afternoon, Miss Reynolds. Oh, you must be the famous Christine. Oh, well, uh... hello. Hello. Well, my dear, now that I meet you, I don't blame Tim. Blame him? The last two evenings, Tim has spent most of the time we were together singing your praises. Oh, well, that was very nice of him. I love Chris, too. Mm hmm I'm sure you do. She seems charming. <laughs> oh, Linda, I brought you something. Oh, goody, what is it? Here, a very special candy bar. Oh, gosh. Oh, Linda, no, it... Oh, I mean, uh, Miss Reynolds, perhaps you don't know chocolate for Linda's... That kind allergy of... business? Yes. In her case, it's nonsense. Go ahead, darling. May I eat it, Chris? Darling, I said you might. And now, Linda, suppose you run out and play. I don't want to. I want to stay with you and Chris. Darling, I think you'd better go outside. I don't want to. Linda, you will go outside now. I won't. I'm staying here with Chris. Linda Harris. Miss Reynolds, if you don't mind. Linda, it's two hours since you've seen those puppies next door. Maybe now their eyes are open, huh? Do you really think so? And besides, they may be lonesome for you. That's right, dear. Go see the puppies. <laughs> Okay. You forgot your chocolate. It's not good for me. <laughs> Poor baby. She's been so confused by the constant change of help. Oh, yes. Uh, the new woman, she was due it, too. She's not coming. Tim phoned me. He'll be here any minute. Oh. Well, then, uh, since you're here, I guess I can go on. If you wish. Uh, Miss Reynolds... Uh, Mr. Harris asked that I mention one or two things about Linda. Thank you, my I... dear, but I don't think I need to be told how to care for a spoiled child. Oh, Miss Reynolds, she's not spoiled. Well, yes, she is, but, but in her case, the reason is so obvious. Uh, she needs security and affection that she can count on. She needs a... Go on. Is that all you had to say? Well, I didn't intend to say that much. Uh, about uh, Linda's clothes, Miss Reynolds, she, she needs some, and I've made a list... Uh, perhaps when you're I'm shopping, sure the you... boarding school will take care of that, but thank you anyway. Oh, that's quite all right. Did you say boarding school? Yes. After all, it's the sensible solution. The child needs discipline, and I've taken the trouble to find just the perfect place for her. Oh, Miss Reynolds, you can't send Linda to a boarding school. I can't. No, in some cases for some children, maybe a school is fine. Oh, but that's not what Linda needs. It happens she... to be necessary. But why? Why is it necessary for you? You're healthy and intelligent. Why should you send her away? Young woman, are you trying to tell me what to do? Yes, if I have to. Sylvia, Miss Marshall. Tim, I'm glad you're here. This girl has been trying Mr. to... Mr. Harris, tell her she can't do it. A school isn't the answer, not for Linda. A school? We'll discuss it later, Tim, darling. Tell her to go. She needs you, Mr. Harris. She needs attention. She needs love. Well, we talked of a school once, but there was no decision. Of course there wasn't. The girl is jumping to conclusions. Send her away, Tim. He won't have to, Miss Reynolds, because I'm going, and right now... Chris, listen to me. Don't talk to me. Why didn't you have better sense? For Linda, if not for yourself? Chris, it's still not too late before Hal gets back with those tickets. Are you sure you want to leave? Yes, I'm going, and I want to go. Well, then what were you crying about in the taxi? I wasn't crying. And if I was, it was for Linda, that's all. 
Jane, don't you see what I did in that house? I, I, I put myself, when I was a little girl, in Linda's place. Oh, but it was wrong for her, and she was right not to want her daddy to marry that... that Sylvia. Hey. Hey, are you very sure it's just the little girl you're crying about? How could he love that woman? How could he? Oh, his Hal. Honey, did you get the tickets? Yeah, we're all set. The train's just about to leave. We have to hurry. Come on. Hal, it's not too late. Look, tell Chris not to go. She loves that guy. I don't. And I never want to see him again. Come on, here's the gate. Tickets, please. All right. Chris! Oh, Chris! Hey, do you hear what I hear? Chris, wait! Gateman, don't let that girl through! Linda! Oh, Tim. Oh, we caught her. Daddy or oh. Ray, we caught her. Chris, you can't go. I've got to. Jane, Hal, get on the train and I'll be right there. Okay, come on, Janie. Good luck, Chris. Now, remember what I said, honey. Chris, you've got to stay. I can't. And anyway, Sylvia... Sylvia's gone and she's not coming back. I'm glad, because she was a stinky old queen anyway, Chris. Oh. I found out. Oh, Linda. We both need you, Chris. There are lots of things I can't say here and you think I was crazy if I did, but if I just had the chance. But, come back, Chris, please. But I... If anybody cares, the train's leaving. Uh, Tim, Tim, there, there are many things that you don't know about me. Uh, my work... I'm not really a housekeeper. I'm an actress. An actress? Yes. I love actresses. Well, so do I. Oh. There's just one thing that matters. We need you, both of us. We sure do, Chris. And what's more important, I love you. Oh, but Tim, it can't happen that fast. Can it? Come here. Oh. Oh, Tim. Oh, maybe it can, huh? In fact, I guess it has. Oh, darling, I... Little girl, did you count on going anywhere today? Oh, yes, sir. They'll remember me in a little while. Then both of them will take me home. Only we never ride in an old train. My family's got a royal coach. This is Malik Howers again. You know, our happiness so often comes from little things. The simple deeds, the daily thoughtful acts of kindness, the words of encouragement we can and should give to one another. Those things mean so much, especially at home, where appreciation and gratitude may often be forgotten because, well, because it's home. It's sad to see a home where words of thanks are forgotten. Or, or where there is distrust or quarreling. Because home was meant to be the happiest place in the world. It can be with God's help. It will be if it has the practice of daily family prayer. The family that remembers to thank God each day in prayer will never be unappreciative of each other. Yes, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Just for Tonight, starring Loretta Young and Gigi Perot. Mala Powers was your hostess. Others in our cast were John Stevenson, Vivi Jansen, Charlotte Lawrence, James McCallion, and Jim Nusser. The script was written by True Boardman, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week for a special hour-long program, The Thanksgiving Hour. Join us, won't you? is the Mutual Broadcasting System.